Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new cordless Hoover vacuum. This is the Hoover One Power Evolve Pet Cordless Upright. This is the latest model to join Hoover's One Power lineup of products, which all share the same style battery. Hoover is saying this machine is the new and improved version of the popular Lynx cordless stick vacuum that's been around for over a decade. They share some similarities in form factor, but this Evolve Pet is much more powerful and has a better bagless filtration system. Hoover is even stating that this cordless vacuum outcleans a popular corded model Shark. I've owned a couple different cordless Hoover vacuums over the years, and this is by far the most powerful cordless Hoover vacuum I've ever used. For what it is, it cleans carpeting and bare floors surprisingly well. Today I'm going to demonstrate it, show you its features, and test a bunch of different things on the vacuum. I'll also show you the maintenance I would recommend. Let's take a look at the charging station and the batteries. So this is the charging dock that it came with, and uh, you just want to make sure you have room for this power brick wherever you plug it in. And then it comes with two batteries. Uh, this is the 4.0 Max, and to charge this, it just slots in here. It's really easy, and it, it slots onto the vacuum the same way too, and it'll show you the charging status. So actually, this is fully charged. Both of them are fully charged, but what it'll do when it's charging, it'll show you a flashing indicator light, and it'll slowly build back up to fully charged. This Hoover Evolve came with two batteries, and they're different sizes. Apparently this two battery deal is only for a limited time, which is a shame because having a spare battery has already proven convenient. To install the battery, there is a slot right here, and it lines up with the battery. It lines up very easily, and you just drop it in, and then push it in until it clicks. Here are the controls. You have a power button, as well as three cleaning modes. There's the multi-surface mode, which I think of as its eco mode, which has lower power, but much longer battery life. Then there's the carpet mode, which I use the most, as it's far more powerful for cleaning carpeting. The final mode is the brush off mode for cleaning hard flooring. I use the carpet mode and the brush off mode the most. The multi-surface. The brush shuts off and you raise the handle up right. Now we're gonna go over to carpet mode. It's got a lot more suction. You can hear it. And the brush will spin a lot faster. And then at any time you can check the state of the battery life by hitting that. I timed the battery life for both batteries on all three cleaning modes. Here are the results. The larger battery seems to have about 25% longer run time. When cleaning my home, I use the carpet and brush off modes the most. In its most powerful carpet mode, with both batteries, you get about a half hour of total run time. You get much longer battery life on the multi-surface mode, but it's a lot less powerful. I think of it as its eco mode. Honestly, with these numbers, I'm glad to have two batteries. Another nice thing about this vacuum is that uh, it's, it's pretty slim in design and it's very maneuverable and it's also pretty low profile. It can lay completely flat to the floor, so you can pretty easily get around furniture and things in your home and underneath a good amount of furniture too. So without either battery attached, just the vacuum itself weighs 6.72 pounds. With the smaller capacity battery attached, we're looking at just under 8 pounds, that's really good. And finally, with the larger battery attached, it weighs just over 8 pounds. It does feel really lightweight to push around, it's really nice. At 1.68 pounds, the handle weight when you're pushing the machine around is nice and light. The cleaning path is approximately 10.5 inches wide, which I would say is decent for a cordless vacuum. The vacuum can lay completely flat to the floor and needs about 8 inches of clearance to completely clean under something. The cleaner head is very low profile, but the location of the hose sort of gets in the way. Now let's see how noisy it is. I'll put this down kind of by the motor, and first we're going to try it on the low mode. And then turn the brush on. Okay, now let's turn it up. This will be the noisiest it's going to be. So it's not a quiet vacuum cleaner, but uh, I don't know, it's not too ear splitting. It's, it's acceptable. So now I'm going to measure the suction, and I'm going to start with, I'll start with the low and the high. And we'll, I've got this uh, water lift gauge here. So this is on its lowest setting. That looked like about maybe 16 inches of water lift. Not amazing. Let's try it on carpet. Mm -hmm. 
On carpet and hard floor mode, the suction is about double at around 30 inches of water lift. This makes a huge difference and delivers great results for a cordless vacuum. Part of why it cleans so well has to do with the nozzle design. There are no little vents to leak out the suction around the nozzle, so at the floor you get a surprisingly good seal and it grabs the carpet nicely, almost imitating great airflow. Paired with a fairly aggressive brush roll, the cleaning results you get from it are impressive. The cleaner head sealing to the floor does mean that it can't clean all types of carpeting easily, which is disappointing. On this rubber-backed area rug, it seals down to the rug and is incredibly difficult to push. While it works great on my standard plush carpet, I found I can't use this hoover easily on this red rug or my rubber-backed bathroom mat. It's a shame there isn't a way to vent the suction out in some way to prevent this. All right, on my boring tan carpeting here, I've got a mixture of glitter, shredded paper, fake pet hair that I've ground in, and almost like a, a pink gravel-like substance. All right, one pass forward and back. Uh, that did a great job. And you can see how well it's groomed the carpeting too. So for a cordless vacuum, the performance is excellent. Honestly, on this particular type of carpet, this is one of the best cleaning cordless vacuums I've ever used, and certainly the best cleaning cordless Hoover vacuum. I mean, you can see the carpet there and what a difference that made. Uh, it really, uh, it grooms really well. It honestly looks like I used a regular vacuum. It's really impressive. Well, from those first two carpet cleaning demonstrations, uh, it looks like the bin is full, so now I'm gonna show you how to empty it. You just push down on this button here and the whole dirt cup comes out the back. Here's your bin. And uh, just from that, that's quite a bit. So then the way to empty this, you just push down on this and it should just all fall out the bottom into the trash. So let's try to do this. See how clean this is. I had to shake it out a little bit, but that fake pet hair is like pretty fluffy. So, uh, but yeah, that wasn't too bad, fairly clean. And then obviously, uh, like any bagless, little bits of dust will build up on the outside here, but you can just wipe that off. And then uh, after I'm done doing all these cleaning demonstrations, I'll show you the maintenance that I would recommend on this vacuum. To put it back in, the bin lines up on this, just sets in, and you uh, lock it back into place. That's it, pretty easy. So one surprising thing, although this does not work on my short uh, rubber back dairy rug, this does work on the shag rug. <laughs> and uh, it's a little harder to push as you would expect because it doesn't have a manual height adjustment, but let's see how it cleans. I think it should be fine. But I'm gonna set this to full power too. Now for a little stick back on a shag area rug, that did really well. Uh, that gobbled that uh, fine stuff up right away. For a little cordless vacuum, not bad at all. Now let's clean hard floors. So for this uh, demonstration, I'm going to try the two different hard floor modes for this. The dedicated bare floor mode, which shuts the brush roll off and the multi-surface mode, which runs the, uh, which has lower suction and runs the brush at a much slower speed, which basically I think would be like it's eco mode. 
Uh, I'm going to start with what I would normally, what I plan to do, which is with the brush roll shut off. And this is just finer particles. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put down some slightly larger ones too. And this seals so strong to the floor, I think it's going to do great with this, with both settings. But because it seals so hard to the floor, I think larger stuff might push around. But what I noticed so far is that just cleaning up everyday crumbs off your kitchen floor, it's worked great. So the brush is off. finer particles on hard floors, that did a great job. Uh, from where I am, it doesn't look like it's missed anything. Being able to pick that up that well with the brush roll shut off is pretty impressive for a cordless vacuum. So that's really good. And this does have more suction than the other Hoover cordless vacuums that I've used. I mean, it's perfect. I'll do one more with the brush off. That's impressive. Part of why it helps so, or why it does so well, uh, there's a squeegee along the back of the brush roll and the suction seals to the floor pretty well. Uh, all four wheels are non-marring, so um, this is made to be used on hard floors, so hopefully it won't scratch them. It seems fine. So again, that was another excellent result. Because of the squeegee on the back of the brush roll nozzle, it didn't scatter anything. So that seems pretty good. Finish up with that. Alright, so far, for uh, finer particles, the result was excellent. It looked perfect. Uh, it looked like it got everything on the first pass, unless that's something. No, that's whatever that is, it's stuck to the floor. So, <laughs> now I'm going to do the same test again. I'm going to use both bare floor settings here. But now, along with the finer particles, I've got uh, oats and rice, heavier, larger particles. And I'm curious to see how it's going to push this stuff around. So, let's get started. First, I'm going to do the brush off. first pass was really good. Along here, I don't know if this is on camera, but along the edge here, it's having a hard time grabbing this rice, probably from the angle that I'm at, and that, you know, while it has good suction for a cordless vacuum, it still doesn't have insane suction. Again, that's pretty good. And this has a pretty wide cleaning path for a cordless vacuum too, so I'm kind of covering a lot of area pretty quickly. So I'll try one more pass over here, I'll clean the rest of this up. Uh, not bad at all. Now just like before, I'm going to try out the multi-surface setting for the rest of this, and we'll see how it does with the brush spinning. Hopefully it won't scatter any larger stuff. So I wouldn't expect to be able to pick up Cheerios with this thing, but uh, the rice it gobbled right up, which is great, and the oats as well. I've seen some vacuum struggle with oats. Robots seem to struggle with oats. And, uh, but that did a fantastic job. And again, it, it, especially great for a little cordless vacuum. So pretty good. So now uh, let's move over to the corner here. All right, well, to be true to how I, would, I plan to use this, for right up against the corner, I'm gonna try it with the brush shut off. And we're just gonna see how it does just with suction only.
Again, I continue to be impressed. For a cordless upright, that's an excellent result. Look, it only left just a tiny little bit behind. Really, really good. So now I'll try it with the multi-surface. And again, that's a pretty much a perfect result. That's very, very good. So let me get this uh, one little bit up here. So again, pretty impressive uh, along the edge and in corners, even just suction only, it did a great job. So that's pretty good. Go ahead and empty this out again. Let's see everything that's collected. So again, this just unsnaps right here. And now push this button here. It's uh, so far pretty easy to empty, relatively clean for a bagless vacuum. You are gonna have to keep it clean, uh, obviously. These are not maintenance-free systems. Now I'll show you the regular maintenance I plan to perform on the vacuum. I would disconnect the battery before working on it. I'm going to clean out the bin, the filters, the base and brush roll, and the dirt cup seals. You can remove this brush roll here. It's really easy, you don't need tools. You just unlock it here and then it pulls out. So push down to unlock it. And now I can pull the whole brush roll out. Really, really easy, I like that. This is actually nice and easy to get into to wipe out. So the brush roll, it has guides in here, and you can uh, run a blade or a pair of scissors or a knife along this guide here, this groove, and clean all the hair and thread out. This end cap lifts off, and what I noticed from looking at this is that dust did build up in here. It's got a little ball bearing in here, uh, but dust did get into the end. So you're going to want to um, pull this off when you clean this out is what I would recommend doing. And wiping this out, uh, you could use compressed air, but getting all the, uh, the crud that's built up around it off of it and then I'm just going to wipe this down. That looks good, so that just presses back on. And before I put that back in the vacuum, uh, this seal here, just from my cleaning test, is pretty dirty. So you're gonna wanna clean this regularly as well, this important rubber seal. I cleaned this important seal off with all-purpose cleaner as well. Now I'm going to take apart the bin so I can clean the filters and the cyclone pack. There's a latch that opens the top lid and the washable filters easily remove. Normally, I will wash these every couple months, but today I'm just going to vacuum them off. With the top lid open, the cyclone pack can simply be pulled out. Along with the filter, you wanna regularly check and clean the mesh screen inside the dirt cup, which is called a shroud. It's very important that you keep the shroud and the filters clean. Today, I'm gonna to vacuum off the shroud along with the seal at the top of the cyclone pack. Now with everything clean, I put the cyclone pack back into the bin. It can go in any way as long as you line up the blue notches at the top of the cup. Then I put the filters back in. You want to put the filters in so that you see the black sponge when the filter is installed, like so. The base hose removes easily too if there's ever a blockage. The entire air path looks like it would be easy to clean out, but because it's somewhat narrow, you should be careful not to pick up anything too large that could potentially get stuck in the hose. When you push the hose back into the base, you'll hear it lock into place. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is just slide the brush roll back in, like so. Kind of rotate it until it locks into place. There we go. And then all you do here is twist it up to lock it. I like how you can do this without tools. That's really nice. Well, build quality on this is questionable, and this is um, these are selling for a fraction of the price of a Dyson cordless. It's still not a cheap sweeper, but so far, everything seems fine. The seals look good. I'm not gonna say that this thing looks extremely heavy duty, but I think if you take care of it, if you do what I just did there, you know, every few months, uh, it should, you know, hopefully last a long time. So there you have it. Overall, I'm very impressed with this new Hoover. For a bagless cordless vacuum, the performance across carpeting and hard floors is fantastic. This is the best cleaning cordless Hoover I've ever used. I still don't think it will replace a regular corded vacuum for deep cleaning carpeting, but Hoover is getting closer. And if you have all hard flooring in your home, this is a very good option. 
I like the one power system and how the batteries are very easy to swap out. This is my first one power product, so I can't speak for the rest of their line, but so far this cordless Hoover is great. I have few faults with the machine. I prefer when vacuums have onboard tools, but to be honest, I'm so impressed with how well this simply cleans flooring, I can get past that. I could also see the base hose being a weak point, and hopefully it's durable and will last a long time. One final thing to note is that this Hoover does not feature sealed HEPA filtration. The vacuum only relies on the dual cyclone and the washable premotor filters. Washing the filters regularly will help with exhaust air quality. The cleaner retails for $200 and features a three-year warranty, and I believe that warranty covers the batteries. Overall, this is one of my favorite cordless vacuums I've owned. If you have any questions, feel free to ask, and as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.